In this video you will learn about DeFi, liquidity pools, pricing mechanisms in liquidity pools and how to pull data from the Uniswap API with Python. So have fun with the video. Let's start with decentralized finance, short form DeFi. Leverages blockchain technology to provide transparent, secure and inclusive financial services without intermediaries. What does that even mean? Transparent, you know exactly who is doing what and who is paying what. Take for instance an exchange with a bid ask spread, which is making money on each trade simply by the existence of that spread. Things like that don't exist on DeFi. Inclusive, you don't have any access barriers to participate. Take for instance a stock exchange. Not everyone can trade stocks, be it due to country restrictions, not enough credit to open an account or whatever you can imagine. For DeFi, you don't need anything except an internet connection. Also, you don't need to go through any KYC process as opposed to a lot of crypto exchanges today. Now let's take a look at a DeFi exchange. I'm taking Uniswap as an example here simply because it's the world's biggest decentralized exchange short form DEX. It is by volume the fourth largest crypto exchange. That's quite a number showcasing the relevance of those DEXs in the crypto space. And it is acting like an automated market maker using liquidity pools. Now what are those liquidity pools? You have liquidity providers. That could be anyone, you, me, also a bot. These liquidity providers lock their coin holdings in that liquidity pool. Why should anyone do that? Because they are just getting a share of the trading fees which is generated in the pool. This whole construct of liquidity provision within a liquidity pool is implemented via so-called smart contracts. Now the traders, could be you, me, also bot again, can buy and sell coins from this pool. Let's move on taking a look at how the pricing mechanism within this pool is working. So how much do people pay for coins and how does buying and selling coins affect the price? Take an example of a pool with initial reserves of 100 ETH and 10k USDC which is just a US dollar stablecoin. If you just divide the USDC amount by the ETH amount, you will get an initial price of 100 USDC per ETH. Now let's consider a trade in the pool. I'm disregarding fees for now. Trader buys 10 ETH. The new ETH reserve now is 90 ETH, simply 100 minus 10. Now the new USDC reserve is calculated using a certain formula. Uniswap is using the constant product formula, which is x times y equals k. That is x is ETH, y is USCC, and k is the product out of both. Initially, the pool had 100 ETH, 10k USCC, thereby we have a k of 1 million. So you just rearrange terms here to calculate what is the amount of USCC you need to fulfill this formula. So you take 1 million, which here is shown as 100 times 10k and divided by the new ETH amount, 90. With that, you're getting a number which is quite hard to pronounce for me, so I'm saving you these nerves. Finally, you calculate how much USDC you need to add to the pool, which is simply new calculated USDC amount minus initial amount and you're getting the amount the trader needs to add to the pool, which is 1.1k USDC. The new price in the pool now is USDC amount divided by ETH amount, which has now a price of 123.46 USDC per ETH. Considering fees here is just increasing the amount of USDC needed in the pool. So you got more USDC when you add the fee amount here, which the liquidity providers benefit from. Now, the cool thing about these DEXs in specific Uniswap is, all data from all pools is publicly available and you can query them. 
And that is exactly what I'm going to do with you. Before doing so, let's take a quick look at the Uniswap website so you're getting familiarized with the platform first. All right, so this is the Uniswap website. You have tokens, pools, and transactions here. So let's take a look at some coins. We have ETH on top in terms of volume, which is clear because Uniswap is based on Ethereum. You have some stable coins after that here, and then you see you have a meme coin here, another one, MAGA. MAGA never surrendered Trump. I mean, you have a Republican bias here. We have Elon, Uniswap, Free Trump, Harry Potter, Obama. So we have some Democratic representation here as well, Super Trump. And there we have also Joe Biden, right? So I'm just trash talking here so you can check that out for yourself. I found it quite funny what coins you can trade on these uh, decentralized exchanges. So there's a wider selection of meme and trash coins as you can see here, right? So take a look at that on this platform. You can also query, which I will go through in some minutes. Now, these are the tokens. More importantly, we have pools. And here you see, for instance, the BTC ETH pool. This is the fee rate. So every trade cost 0.3%. And you have this metric TVL, which is total value locked, which is a very important metric. That is just telling you what amount in terms of US dollar is locked in that pool. And obviously the higher the amount here, the better the liquidity. And why is that? As you saw in my example, we had a 10 ETH trade on a 100 ETH uh, pool, right? Which had a very significant impact on the price. The more coins are locked, the less one trade has an impact on the pool. So the higher the value here, the less one trade can impact the price. All right? So the higher the liquidity, the better in most cases, all right? So again, you see coin pairs here, BTC, ETH, USDC, ETH, and the fee rate. Now, we have the coin pair as a differentiation. We have the fee rate as a differentiation. There's one other differentiation, which is the version of Uniswap. You see some V2 marks here, all right? And this is also a differentiation for a pool. So this is a good example here. You have the ETH USDC pool with a 0.3% fee rate. This is also ETH USDC and you have 0.3% fee rate as well, but this is based on version two here. So you have these differentiation possibilities of liquidity pools, okay? Now you can drill in those pools here and get some more information. You get the pool balance of Bitcoin ETH here, the total value locked as I just explained the volume. And you also see the transactions which are happening in this pool, all right? Now what's very important for querying this platform in general is every pool and every token has an address. And this pool, for instance, has this address. So if you want to query pool information on BTC ETH pool, you have to have this address here. You can also query this address with in the API, but just keep that in mind. So you need those addresses and we will also use them when querying. Last but not least, we have transactions here and you see what's going on the uh, exchange. So everything is being tracked here. You have the swap. So if somebody is changing one coin to the other one, but you also have the pool based transactions here whenever somebody is buying or selling from the pools. All right, and that's it for the website already. So explore it a bit yourself. I found this very interesting. Now let's move over to querying with the API. Let's pull some data from the API. We need requests to post a query to the Uniswap API. 
and we need to define the endpoint, which I'm doing here. As you might already see from the URL, this API is a very specific one, which only accepts GraphQL queries. But don't worry, you don't need GraphQL knowledge. I'm just explaining you how a GraphQL query is looking like. It's very straightforward, I promise. So we have our endpoint. Now we have to send a query in GraphQL format. This query here is working in the following way. So you query pool data for a certain pool ID. And this is simply this ID I just pulled from the Uniswap website. This is the address for Bitcoin in relation to ETH. All right. So this ID is the pool ID for the Bitcoin ETH pool. Side note here, very important. Be careful that you only post lowercase letters here. If you copy paste from the Uniswap website, you will get capital letters. The API doesn't understand that. You have to post it as lowercase letters as shown here. Now, this is just defining the columns you want to pull for that pool ID. And first of all, you pull the ID, which is exactly this one just that you see that you're pulling data from this pool ID here. Then you pull the token zero, which is just the first token in that pool, which is Bitcoin, as it is a Bitcoin ETH pool. And now you pull also columns for that token, which is Bitcoin. So you want to have the symbol, which will be Bitcoin, and the ID, which will be the address of Bitcoin. So this kind of structure for the Bitcoin token, not the pool. So as you see, GraphQL works with a hierarchical structure. So you define the columns for the pool. And then if you want to have information on the columns you pull, so if you pull token zero, you define the next level of hierarchy within those parentheses or brackets or whatever you want to call them. Same story for token one. So now token one is ETH, the second coin in Bitcoin ETH. And again, you pull the symbol for ETH and the ID, the address for ETH. And finally, you are on the hierarchy level of ID, token zero, token one again, and you pull the fee tier for this pool and the total value locked in US dollar for this pool. Then you close out the remaining parentheses or brackets, and you are done with the query. So let's execute that. And now we just have to send this query to the API. So execute that. This is what I'm doing here. So we are using a POST request. Define the endpoint here from above, this one. And then we define JSON equals query, and then we provide our query. So let's take a look at what we are getting. So response, just quickly pu uh, pulling that in JSON format, easier to read. And now you see exactly what you want to have. So you have data, we have a pool with the ID of this one here. That is exactly the one you provided here. And then you have token zero and then sub columns here, next level of hierarchy. Symbol, which is BTC, by the way, the W is just um, standing for wrapped BTC, but it's simply BTC. And you have the ID for BTC. Token one, ETH, and you have the ID for ETH. Then you have the feed tier of 3K. Important here, this is equivalent to the 0.3%. So you're getting it in 10K marks here, right? So if you want to have it, as the actual percentage value, you have to divide that by 10K. Now total value locked, 501 million US dollar roughly. All right, so this is what you're getting with a simple pool query. Let's take another example just to throw some examples at you. In the end, you have to know what you're interested in but I hope this will give you the main logic of how queries are working. So next one we have here, 
And that is a token query now. We take the ID of Bitcoin here and we want to have information on the token. So before we pulled pool information and now we have token information. Now we provide the ID, which is just either this one or you just copy paste it from the Uniswap website when going on uh, BTC. Just be careful again with lowercase letters. And then you pull the derived ETH. That is simply the ETH amount, which Bitcoin currently is worth, All right? So again, Uniswap is a Ethereum protocol, so everything is measured in ETH here. So query again, same story as before, just one column. This time, so just one level of hierarchy opposed to uh, two levels of hierarchy before. So if we post that exactly as before, we are getting this reply from the API. So you see that our uh, Bitcoin token is worth 17.86 ETH currently. All right. So again, you can also pull the ID again just to show you uh, how this is working with adding columns or adding more data points here. So you see Bitcoin ID and derived ETH. Next, maybe a more interesting query, but slightly more complex, but not that complex. So it's perfectly fine. You see now I'm pulling all pools and I also order this. So this is quite similar syntax to SQL. So you see I'm ordered by, uh, I'm ordering by the total value locked and I'm ordering descending here, all right? And now I'm pulling all pools. I'm not providing any IDs. I'm pulling all pools. Then I wanna have the ID of that pool, the token zero and token one and the symbol and ID of the tokens within this pool, the fee rate and the total value locked. And again, I'm posting that to the API. So let's take a look at how this is looking like. Uniswap v3 API URL is not defined. Messed up with uh, some, uh, sorry. With some copy pasting here. So this is looking like this. And now you're getting a lot of um, pool data here. So this is some, I guess, some domain pool. So not not a public pool. Some some uh, some transfer pools. So the first biggest one you're getting here, right? So you're getting USCC in relation to ETH, which you also saw on the website. Fee structure 0.5 percent. Oh, oh no, in this case 0.05 percent, as you have to divide it by 10 grand. Total value locked 500. 13 million and so on, right? So you see that next you're getting the BTC ETH pool and so on. So you can go through that and take a look at all pools you're interested in. I think that's way more than enough for now. There are, of course, sky's the limit here, right? You can pull transaction, you can do some data analysis, data science on this data. Everything like that, you can also trade on these platforms. So there's way, way, way more to talk about. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And I thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this as exciting as I found this. So thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.